guys, John Rettinger with John4Lakers.com here with a software overview for you of the T-Mobile G1, or more specifically, an overview of the Android operating system that the device is running. So, I hope you enjoy, and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye. Alright guys, so here we have the Android home screen, and the really cool thing about the device is while most smartphones only have one screen, the G1 and Android actually have three. So on this home screen here, I've got some icons and a Google search. And if I scroll to the right, I actually get another home screen, and I can drag icons here. Or if I hold down, I get a little haptic feedback. And I can add widgets or clocks or anything that I'd like here. So let's put a clock there, and I can hold it down, move it anywhere I like. You can go back, and you can select icons that you want on the home screen. If you find one you want, you can just hold it down and it shows up right on the home screen. Go to the right and you have another home screen and you actually have the option to do that one more time. So three home screens make it a very customizable experience. I personally enjoy having everything on one, but you may like having applications on one screen, clock on another, shortcuts or settings uh, on a third. Really it varies on user experience. So let's go ahead and get started and walk through the software. So the first thing you'll notice when you look at it is this strange little arrow down there. And that little arrow is actually one of the most important features of the operating system itself. Take your finger, slide it up, and it pulls up the myriad of menu choices that you have. It comes with alarm clock, Amazon MP3 browser, which is sort of like Google's Chrome, calculator, calendar, camera, contact styler, email, Gmail, which actually it syncs your contacts automatically with Gmail. That prompts you to set up a Gmail account or log into your existing Gmail account when you first turn on the device. I am Maps, Android Marketplace, Messaging, Movies is an application I downloaded, Music, My Faves, Pictures, Pro Basketball, another one that I downloaded, Quote Pro for tracking your stocks, downloaded that as well, Ring Toggle, which is a must-have, I'll show you that a little bit later, Settings, TwitDroid, which is a Twitter client for the device, Voice Dialer, and YouTube. So we'll go back here, and then I've got a Google search bar. You can click it, slide open the screen, type in anything you want, and Google will search it for you. So you may have seen my browser comparison versus the iPhone. Let me walk you through the browser here one more time. Now I'll just show you the highlights of the browser. Doesn't want to be selected. There we go. Typing at a wrong angle and I'm using the device's capacitive touchscreen, so it's not resistive. So here we are on the home screen. Let's go ahead and search for, we'll do basketball, since I had the basketball application right there. And the keyboard is extremely usable. And it pulls up a list of choices. I'll hit the scroll ball into enter, and we will let it search. Let's scroll down to search. And we are off. So we've got MBA.com. That sounds like a good choice. We'll go ahead and click that. And it's loading up on T-Mobile's 3G connection, which is actually relatively fast. Loading up, and it's letting me know that I need Flash Player, which don't have right now. Let's go ahead and keep looking at the browser. Scrolling is very smooth. Zooming in and out is done through these positive or negative magnifying glasses, so we'll zoom out. And you do get a very desktop-like browsing experience. It is very smooth and fluid. One of the cool things that this browser has is in the corner, those four little arrows. If you click it, I'm having trouble selecting it right there. One more time. not want to be selected. There we go. You actually have to tap it. So if you tap it, you can move around and you get a little sort of magnifying glass type thing. So let's tap it again. And hopefully you can see it right there on the screen. I can move it around anywhere I like. Find an area that I want to zoom in on. Let's say that advertisement. Let go and it zooms in right there. It's actually a very cool feature. Tap it. Zoom in on that flash ad. 
and there we go, zoomed in. And the browser is very full featured and quite nice. And if you want to rotate it, you have to slide out the keyboard and it will rotate. The device does have a built in accelerometer, but it for unfortunately right now does not work with tilting uh, similar to the iPhone. Let's go back to the home screen. So, like I mentioned before, you can scroll up and scroll through your icons. Nice and simple. I'm sure you would have figured that out. What this does have, though, and is a very cool feature, is it makes use of the top bar for alerts. You actually take your finger and scroll down, and you get a list of notifications. So if I had text messages or emails, they would all show up right there in a list. It's actually quite handy. Scroll that right up, and if you want to see that again, flick it right on down. Very cool feature. So let me go ahead and walk you through some of the things that you got to have on the device. One of the annoyances I had with the phone was it didn't have an easy way to change profiles. Meaning if I was walking into work or a meeting and I wanted to set the phone to vibrate, I had to put the volume button down all the way, all the way, all the way. Got to be a little bit annoying. So I downloaded this ring toggle program. Essentially what it does, pretty self-explanatory, lets you select your profile. So we'll set it to vibrate. And there it goes. Nice and set to vibrate, very quick, very easy, and certainly very painless. So the next thing you guys are probably going to want to know is how does this stack up to the iPhone compared to the App Store? Well, the Android marketplace is in its infancy, but it certainly has a lot of room and potential. So let me go ahead and show you what the marketplace looks like as we're speaking about programs that you have to download. So you're greeted with a very simple home screen. Applications, games, search, or my downloads. So we'll go to Applicate Applications. It's queuing up right there. And I'm going to keep this in real time so you guys can see how this would load over your typical 3G connection. So, all applications, entertainment, finance, lifestyle, and right now all applications in the App Store are free. So I'm very into the social aspect of it, so let's click social. And it sorts by popularity or date. Click a whole bunch of different choices. So here we have one for, let's say, MySpace Mobile. And it gives you star review on it. And here it goes. If you love MySpace, you're really going to love MySpace Mobile. You can read some reviews and just hit install, and that is it. Piece of cake. So let's install it so you can see what that looks like. Hit OK. Access to the network, giving it hardware controls. And it's downloading. Now if I pull down that little menu bar, it should give me the notification status. There it goes. MySpace Mobile, 0%, 11%. Really shows the speed of T-Mobile's 3G network. It's actually relatively impressive. So it's already halfway downloaded. And now it's fully downloaded, actually. So we'll hit the home button, go back to the home screen, scroll up to our applications, see if we can find it there. MySpace Mobile. Oops. Hit the wrong button. There it is, MySpace Mobile. And simple login. As I showed you before on different home screens, let's say I wanted to put that MySpace mobile icon, let's say on the blank home screen, so the one all the way over the right. You can drag that up, go back to MySpace mobile, hold it down, and I get an icon that I can drag anywhere that I like. And you'll notice when I click the icon now that's on the home screen, that little arrow down below turns into a trash can. I can drag it right to that little trash can, and it'll remove the icon from the home screen. It won't delete it, it'll just remove it, remove it from the screen. So we'll go back to the home screen here. So it really does come with a myriad of games. It's got a Google Maps application that everybody's very familiar with. It looks like Google, Google Maps on any device. Nothing terribly exciting there. It's got a music player built in, but does not have a built in video player, although there are third party video players that you can download. Artists, albums, songs, and playlists. It's a pretty straightforward music player. There's some preloaded songs on here. Here's one, Flight of the Concords. Big fan of them, so let's open that up. Click it, and it pulls the album information. Opens up the song. And go ahead and hit the play. To avoid any copyright infringement, I'm not going to be able to play that anymore for you. But you guys can see what it looks like. Album art. Some information about it. You can shuffle or go back. I'll take a look at the home screen here. So overall, I found the device to be very usable. The user interface is intuitive, and it's only going to get better with software updates. 
So guys, this is John Rettinger with John4Lakers.com. Just giving you a very quick software overview of the T-Mobile G1 and Android in particular. Hope you enjoyed, and if you want some more exclusive content, be sure to follow me on Twitter at www.twitter.com slash John4Lakers. I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye. Hey guys, John Rettinger with John4